Hello everyone and welcome back to this STM32 Beginners Guide series. In today's episode, we are going to learn about UART communication. In this video, I'm going to show you how to transmit data from your STM32 microcontroller to a computer, as well as how to read data back from the computer into the STM32 microcontroller using UART. To make things more interesting, to demonstrate how UART works, we are going to create a project where we can control the color of an RGB LED by typing the letters R, G or B into the computer. My name is Ali and you are watching CGHQ. What is UART communication and how does it work? Universal Asynchronous Transmitter and Receiver, also known as UART, is a communication protocol that allows serial data transmission between devices. It's asynchronous which means it doesn't need a clock signal to synchronize the data transmission between the transmitter device and the receiver device. The UART we're going to learn about in this video allows for full duplex communication which means it can send and receive data simultaneously. Unlike some microcontrollers that require an external serial bridge like the FTDI chip, the STM32F1RE's UART 2 is directly connected to the microcontroller's USB port. This means that you can use UART 2 for serial communication with a computer without needing additional hardware for USB to serial conversion. UART works by sending data in packets where each packet contains a start bit, 8, data bit, an optional parity bit, and a stop bit. Another thing you should know about UART is baud rate, which determines how fast the data is being transmitted. It is measured as the number of bits per second. For communication to be successful, both the transmitter and the receiver must be set to the same baud rate. To demonstrate how UART works, we'll set up our STM32 microcontroller to send data to a computer and receive data from the computer. This will allow us to control the RGB LEDs color based on the characters we type on our computer's keyboard. To start coding, go ahead and open STM32 Cube IDE and click on Create New STM32 Project. When this is done, go to Board Selector and type the microcontroller that you have. Click on your microcontroller, click on Next, and then for project name, you can just call our project UART, and we're going to save it in the default location. Then click on Finish. To initialize UART, you need to come here where it says Connectivity. Click on UART 2. And then here where it says mode, click on asynchronous. If you scroll down, you can see the parameters for the UART that we just initialized. So you can see that the baud rate is currently set to 115200 bits per second with the word length of 8 bits, no parity bit, and one stop bit. When we receive data from our computer, we want an interrupt to be triggered. So to enable this interrupt, go to NVIC settings and then enable the USAT global interrupt. To demonstrate UART, we're going to connect our RGB LED to three pins on our microcontroller. If you don't have an RGB LED, you can just use three separate LEDs. So we're going to use pin PA5, pin PA6, and pin PB9. So just go ahead and initialize these pins as GPIO output. When you're done, click on Control S to save the project, generate code and switch to the new perspective. Inside of the main C file, we're going to scroll down here to where it says private variables. So under user code begin PV, we're going to initialize the variable that we are going to use to transmit our message. So we can just call this variable TX underscore data for transmit data. And then we are going to save our message inside of this variable. So we can just say, please select color. So R, G, or B. Then we're going to move the cursor back to the beginning and then create a new line. When we're done creating our variable, we need to scroll down here to the main while loop. So under user code begin three, we can just type hal underscore uart underscore transmit. Click on, hold on control and then click on space for auto completion. And then here we see that there are three ways to transmit data with our STM32 microcontroller. The normal way, uh, using direct memory access or uh, or by triggering an interrupt every time you transmit. We're just going to use the normal wave of transmitting. So double click on UI2 and then the data we're transmitting is the variable that we created. So it's TX underscore data. And then here for the size, we're just going to say size of and then we're going to put the variable we created in bracket. 
using this function makes our code easier because we don't have to go back to our variable and count how many characters are inside of the message that we want to transmit and then here where it says timeout you can just say hal underscore maximum delay and then to check that there are no errors in our code we're just going to build the project and we see that it finished building with zero errors so we can go ahead and open our serial terminal app and then make sure that the com port that is listed here matches the com port of your microcontroller and that the speed matches the baud rate of your microcontrollers you add so to verify the com port you can just come to device manager go to ports and you should see your microcontroller and the relevant port now once that is done you can just click on open and as you can see we are currently not transmitting anything so we're going to upload the code to our microcontroller by clicking on this green play button click ok okay now as you can see the message that we stored inside of our transmit variable is currently being transmitted from the microcontroller to our computer so the next step in this video is that i'm going to show you how to receive data from the computer into the microcontroller to receive data we need to go up to where we initialized our first variable and we're going to initialize a variable where we're going to store the data that we're going to receive so i'm just going to say character and then this one i'm going to call it rx underscore data and then i'm going to give it a byte size of one because we're only going to be transmitting one letter to change the color of our rgb led when the variable has been created we can just take this transmit statement and then move it out of the main while loop so we can just put it here where it says user code begin to so we're just gonna paste it here so that we transmit our message once when the code is running and then inside of the main while loop what we're going to do is that we're going to say hal underscore you at underscore receive and then we're gonna hold on control click space for auto completion and then we're going to select this one that says you add underscore receive it so that an interrupt can be triggered when we receive the data from the computer so we're gonna double click on you add two and we want the data that we're going to be received to be stored inside of our rx data variable that we created and then the size of the data you can just type one byte here or you can say size of rx underscore that we then need to come here to where it says drivers and then here to where it says hal driver open src and then you need to double click on this one that says hal underscore u add and then in this file just click on control f and then search rx cplt there's a specific function that we need to find to add to our main c file we're going to copy this function that says hal underscore u add rx cplt callback and then we're going to go back to our main c file and then we're going to scroll all the way down to here where it says user code begin for and we're going to paste our function in there this function is going to be called when an interrupt is triggered after we receive data from the computer into our microcontroller so to be able to see the kind of data that we received from the computer we can just say hal underscore you add underscore transmit And then select on you add two here instead of transmitting tx data we're going to transmit rx data so that we send back the data we received from the computer this process of receiving data and then sending it back to the computer so that we can see it being printed out is called echoing it allows us to see that our microcontroller is able to correctly receive the data that we send from our computer and send and echo it back to our computer when this is done we can just upload the code to our microcontroller and open the serial terminal app okay in the serial terminal app you can see that whenever we type a letter it gets printed back into the serial terminal app this means that our microcontroller is receiving the data from the computer and it transmits the data back to the computer so any letter that we type on our keyboard is going to be printed out on our console this means that we are successfully able to transmit and receive data between our computer and our microcontroller to change the color of our led based on the character we type on our keyboard we're going to create an if statement and we're going to say exclamation strcmp 
to compare the data in our Rx data variable with the letter R that corresponds to the color red for our RGB LED. When the letter received from our computer matches the letter R, we are going to turn on the red LED. So we're going to say HAL underscore GPIO and then hold on control and click space. So we're going to select on this function that says HAL GPIO right pane. So the pane that is connected to our red LED is GPIO port B pin 9. And we want to turn on this LED. So we're going to set the state to 1. When the red color turns on, we want all the other colors to turn off. So I'm going to copy and paste this line two times. And then I'm going to say GPIO A and then pin 5 and pin 6. And then I'm going to set these ones to 0 so that they turn off when the red pin turns on. We're going to copy this if statement two more times for the other colors, green and blue. And we're going to change this to green and then change this one to blue. The green terminal is connected to pin PA6. So we're going to turn on PA6 and then turn off PB9. And then the blue pin is connected to pin PA5. So we turn on PA5 and turn off the other pins. When this is done, we can echo back the corresponding letter back to the computer. So we're going, so we're going to say HAL underscore U add underscore transmit U add two, and then we are going to transmit RX dot. When everything's done, we're going to build our project to confirm that there are no errors. And then we're going to upload the code into our microcontroller and open the serial terminal app. When the code has been uploaded, we see that we are able to transmit our message that says, please select the color RGOP. And when we press R, we see that the letter R is being echoed back to our serial terminal and our LED turns on with the red color. When we type G, our LED changes to the green color and the letter G gets echoed back to the computer. Same thing for B. In this video, we learned how to transmit data from our STM32 microcontroller to a computer, as well as how to receive data from our computer back into our STM32 microcontroller. We also learned how we can change the color of an RGB LED, typing characters on our keyboard and transmitting them via UART. Please also check out another video in this series where I teach you about analog to digital conversion, also known as ADC. In that video, I'm showing you how to read these ADC values and how to display them using you add. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found the video helpful, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any feedback or any questions, please also leave them in the comment section below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content. See you in the next episode.